to the cash register, please? <laughs> The media has done a very good job, and the opposing party has done an excellent job of having you believe that you don't live in a liberal country, that Americans hate liberals. Actually, Americans not only love liberals, they are liberals. They may not call themselves liberals because they got turned into a dirty word, and then liberals ran from the word like a bunch of wusses instead of standing up for it. You know, too many of liberals turned into Harry Reid. <laughs> And on the other side, they don't do this because you have to admire, you have to admire Republicans and conservatives. They are incredible. They have the courage of their convictions. When they believe in something, they believe in it, and you cannot move them. They are, right? Can you imagine if a Republican could be with a 10 million vote margin? You think they would have gone, okay, oh, Democrats, let's see if we can all sit together. No! And they would have had the mandate to do what they want to do with us, right? That's the quote about a 10 million vote margin. We would have really not much to say about it for a couple of years. Why are we a liberal country? Nearly 70% of the people, your fellow Americans in this country, oppose both of these wars and they want to end it. ASAP. That's the country you live in. Nearly 80% of our fellow Americans want stronger environmental laws, not weaker ones. Stronger. Over 80% of our fellow Americans want that. You go down the whole list of issues, other than the death penalty, your fellow Americans are quite liberal on these issues. I mean, pick any issue. Um, women should be paid the same as men. Where do you think Americans stand on that? Almost 90%. <laughs> Right? I mean, seriously, you go down any of the issues, and in the last month, for the first time, a majority of Americans, 54%, said that gay marriage should be the law of the land, federal law of the land. 54% of your fellow Americans. That's the country you share with these people. The people that you're scared of, the people who live out there past Route 3, out in, <laughs> out in the dark forests of Pennsylvania. <laughs> Until you get to La Cienega, <laughs> in LA. Um, it's, but, but that's not who lives out there. Yes, there are a lot of crazy people. Yes, there are a lot of Republicans. Uh, I mean, McCain did get 47% of the vote. So yes, no, it's not, it's not a vastly liberal country, but it is a majority liberal country. We've had three elections in the last decade, 2000, 2004, 2008. The American people, your fellow citizens voted for the liberal in two of those three elections. In two, two thirds of the last elections in this decade, your fellow Americans wanted the liberal. Al Gore won the popular vote by over half a million votes, and of course the 10 million vote margin for Barack Obama. Americans generally, historically, do not change presidents during war. And I think that's one of the best explanations of 2004, plus problems with Kerry and how they ran, how they ran away from the swift boat and let that thing stick. Fight. Okay, so you need to lift your spirits, not operate in a place of cynicism and despair. Share this country with a, you're living in a liberal nation and and it's really about getting people involved, getting yourselves involved, not giving up, and and realizing that um, even though we don't have the money that they have that we can't just say, well, they've got the money, so we, you know, they can buy all these politicians. You know, Martin Luther King said, they've got the dogs and the hoses and the guns, and we're going to beat them. How about the women who got women the right to vote? They had to convince three quarters of the states to vote for that amendment. How many women were in those legislators, legislat except for, I think, in Wyoming and maybe Montana? None! It had to be all men voting for it. They had to get that amendment passed with not a single woman voting for it. Only men could vote. Can you imagine what kind of mountain that must have seemed like to get women the right to vote? So the mountains in, in front of us are really hills compared to what people have come before us have had to deal with. And we should be able to take these hills. We're in the majority. You know how you're in the majority? I'll tell you this. this conservatives know we're in the majority. 
That's why they're so angry. You turn on their hate radio every day on AM radio. If they actually thought they were in charge and that they were the will of the majority of Americans, well, you turn on AM radio and it would sound all happy. Hey, how's it going today? Right? That's not how they sound, is it? Well, who sounds like that? You know? Somebody who knows that they're caught. They're not in charge. That's why they're having to pass all these voter suppression laws across the country. I don't know if you know about this. But in state by state, they're trying to pass laws to make it difficult for people to register and to vote. Why would you do that if you thought the majority of the voters were with you? If you thought the majority of the voters were with you, you would go, oh, let's see how easy, how can we make it easier for you? Let's move election day to Saturday and Sunday like they do in Europe so that more people vote. That's what you do if you thought you were in the majority. They know we're in the majority. Our problem is we don't know we're in the majority. That's the part that's got to stop. Okay, I got time to take uh, uh, two or three questions. And uh, the man in the Rutgers jacket will go first. And just speak up so I can hear. And I'll